I've got a question for you. When is a gaming PC not a gaming PC? It's actually a legitimate question. I mean, what I'm trying to get at is, at what point is a system either ridiculously overpriced for what it is, or woefully underpowered to make it being deemed a gaming PC more of a joke than a reality? Well, with this in mind, and following a number of suggestions from our community members, Discord link down below, we decided to go down that wonderful rabbit hole of Facebook Marketplace to see exactly what some people think qualifies as a gaming PC. This ought to be fun. Let's do this. I wish these files would transfer faster. Come on! Whoa, is that the Fire Cuda 510 NVMe drive with its blistering fast speeds of 3450 megabytes a second read, 3200 megabytes a second write, and capacities of up to two terabyte? I can have these files transferred in no time. And if I'm looking for the ultimate performance, I could even get the fourth generation Fire Cuda 520. I better check the link in the description to find out more details. So just before we get into this, let's have a little bit of a disclaimer. We're gonna do everything we can to remove the individual's contact information and we 100% wholeheartedly do not want you getting in touch with any of them people whose systems we might uh, feature here. Something is worth exactly as much as someone else is willing to pay for it. And if you don't agree with the value or quality, you move on. We know our community is pretty cool in regards to stuff like this, but for the sake of the few nutters lurking among you, behave yourselves, please. Don't get us wrong though, this information is publicly available on Facebook Marketplace, so there is absolutely no reason why we can't have a bit of a laugh about it all, and especially so if they have the front to put gaming PC in the product description. Frankly, they've only got themselves to blame. So let's start off with this absolute beauty, and admittedly, we're cheating a little bit to kick this off as this isn't technically a full-blown gaming PC. Instead, it's a motherboard and one of those rather unattractive and colossally huge Cooler Master CM Storm Trooper cases from the early to kind of late 2000s. Complete with what was once, admittedly, an excellent AM3 Plus motherboard about seven years ago. But the big problem here is that the seller of this system couldn't even be bothered to clean it and then once 220 pounds for something resembling a gaming PC, I suppose. I can only presume that they have a somewhat inflated opinion of that redundant, unbranded and disconnected radiator, that likely quite old Corsair PSU, or maybe those three Noctua fans. I mean, Noctua fans are pretty nice after all, and the seller does tell us that the case has had some light modification, but is otherwise stock. Now on top of this, the seller has some other juicy components he's willing to part with for some totally reasonable prices. Like if you want the processor to go with it all. Well, you can have that totally non-toasty AMD FX8350 with water cooler, which I'm guessing is a CPU block for an extra 75 pounds. Or if you are set on that processor, you can just pick one up for about 40 quid on eBay it's the better way to do it. It doesn't just stop there though, there's also the powerhouse graphics card. So once you add everything up for the grand total of around 500 quid, including the super fast 1600 megahertz, 16 gig of mixed branded and probably different speed DDR3, you might just about be able to play Grand Theft Auto. Four. Now I'm always a fan of mildly vague statements when it comes to gaming PCs, like this one, for example, which features an undisclosed Intel i7 and super rare, ultra unique GTX 1550, which is not only more rare than a mint condition Charizard, but is reportedly capable of achieving 100 to 200 FPS. I mean, it's a broad range, so you do get a little bit of scope, which is nice, I guess. And achieving 100 to 200 FPS probably is possible on this system. I mean, something like League of Legends can run on a potato, even if you use a brick as a power supply, get the RAM in the wrong slots, don't fully attach the CPU AIO, and you know, hold everything down with tweezers. But for 500 pound, as diplomatic as we can be for this particular item, I do think the seller is being somewhat optimistic here. Next up, gaming PC for sale. Just make sure you pay a lot more attention to the fancy infinity glass case and all that RGB than, you know, the actual specifications. 
I've actually thought of a title that would undoubtedly better suit this system. <clears throat> an undisclosed Intel i5, an undisclosed Nvidia GPU with two gig of VRAM and one year McAfee antivirus. I mean, the only thing you have to confirm what's inside this system is a very blurry screenshot, bizarrely showing us an i9-9900K and a Zeus Z390F gaming motherboard. Kind of makes me think that maybe they have a small pile of these that they're hoping to get rid of and, you know, wanted to save time and post-production on polishing them pictures. But yes, this maybe just about qualifies as a gaming PC for Fortnite or Minecraft, depending on exactly what GPU it comes with. But I can safely say this is definitely one of the many examples of where style kind of overtakes substance but is then completely ruined by that spider web of cables and LED strips just hanging down. Would you spend £549 on this? I hope not. Then again, if your birthday's coming up and you've asked grandma for a fancy gaming PC, well, let's just hope she isn't on Facebook because this is exactly what you might end up with. Happy birthday. In fairness, and when looking purely at the specifications, there's not much wrong with this one. A Ryzen 5 2600, decent an NVIDIA GTX 1070, old but still good, 16 gig of DDR4 RAM, nice quantity, though speed would have been nice, and a Pro 4 motherboard, so likely B450 Pro 4 from ASRock. I mean, these are pretty respectable specs that can still handle most modern AAA titles. And that's where the good stuff ends, because for the love of God, if you're going to ask for £550 for a gaming PC, at least tidy it up a little bit. And no, we're not just pointing out what's clearly a bargain basement ketchup and mustard power supply, but our best guess is that the dust and dirt must be free or at least considered a feature. I mean, are these people actually trying to sell their PCs or not? Next up is a gaming PC. And that's all we have to go on. No, they're not willing to tell you exactly what the specs are or even give you a picture of what it looks like inside. I'm starting to think that the gaming part of it is guessing what components it even has. But the good news is they're apparently willing to swap this for a PS5 because this system clearly has all the hallmarks of offering comparative performance with super fast load times, silky smooth graphics and glorious ray tracing. Though one of the soupy blurry kind of pictures does seem to have problems connecting to the internet. I'm sure it's fine. What if you don't have a PS5 to swap for this though? Well, the good news is they're willing to grudgingly accept 600 pounds instead. A price which incidentally is about £100 more than a PS5? I mean, do you see £100 worth of extra value here over a PS5? Because if you do, please tell me how. Now, I think it's only right that while we've had a bit of fun at the expense of other people, it does seem appropriate to point out that there are more than a few realistic people selling legitimate gaming PCs on Facebook Marketplace. With this in mind, we think the system here is a great example. With an AMD Ryzen 5 1600X, NZXT Kraken AIO and Corsair's 570X case, I admit it's a bit of a mixed bag to a certain degree. Yes, the CPU isn't top dog anymore, but with an MSI B550 motherboard, there is scope to upgrade the CPU at a later date. And it also claims to have an M.2 SSD. And with a question to the seller, I'm sure you could find out some more specifics on that. For £999, unlike everything else that we've gone through, this actually does show some solid value for money. It's sleek, obviously put together to a professional standard, and although the Ryzen 5 1600X is maybe a little outdated for now, the price the seller wants is definitely something we can look past. My biggest part of gratitude on this one compared to the others is they've actually managed to take half decent pictures, and the biggest thing being it's actually clean. There is not a speck of dust seen in the photo shown. Although I will add that the majority of the photos are taken in the dark to showcase the RGB, but we all know it makes the PC more powerful, right? That paired with the Corsair 570X case, it definitely looks aesthetically pleasing, and the seller himself even describes it as a beast of a machine. But I do think he might be a little bit biased though. So at this point, this about wraps up our somewhat, or at least mostly disturbing, deep dive down into the so-called PC gaming systems being sold on Facebook Marketplace. As we mentioned right at the start though, please, and I'm begging of you, do not contact these people should you happen to find their listings. This is all just in the name of fun. I mean, except for that last one that we actually think is some really kind of pretty solid value for money, or at least for those who don't know how to build their own gaming PC. 
And no, it's not my PC that I've solely created this video for in an attempt to shamelessly pass on merchandise for my own personal profit. I mean, my standards are much higher than that. And I believe that over the many years I've run eTechnics, we've never once had to stoop to such gutter level practices. And you know, we're all about integrity here and giving consumers our honest opinions without prostituting ourselves out for a quick buck. And for those media outlets that do, I have nothing but utter shame and contempt for you. Nothing. Jokes aside, what do you think though? Would you like to see us make this a regular feature where we drill down into these PCs, if you can even call them that? Do you think we're just being a bit mean? Because that kind of, well, was the point. Let us know in the comments. If you love it, we'll do more. If you don't, we'll move on and do something else. And with that, if you did enjoy this, a like and a sub to the channel would be greatly appreciated. And I will see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.